making people money. Um, if you have just owned real estate for the past year, you've made money. Uh, if you look at these stats that we just pulled off, these are to the end of February, I guess, you don't quite go into March. Um, if you look at the total sales volume, sales have increased 75% this year. So from the beginning of the year till now, actually no, it's year, yeah, from year to date, from 2021 to 2022, 75% increase in sales. Now the one at the bottom, the average price, that's where I said everybody who owns real estate made money, price has gone up 11%. Mm -hmm. So, so far this year. So if you own real estate, you've made money, your equity has grown and that's why we're in the game. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and so how crazy is the market right now? It's crazy. We're seeing unconditional offers. Um, one thing we do want to stress: we're just talking to Danielle uh, Demarco, our mortgage broker, who will be up in a in a couple of slides here. Um, there is about eleven to twelve percent of properties coming back on the market. So people are negotiating unconditional offers out there. This is part of the reason people are suffering from FOMO. Um, and what's happening is they're putting these unconditional offers well, in. FOMO, by the way, is fear of missing out. Yeah, <laughs> please don't. There's nothing I've seen about it. It's just yeah. fear of missing out. Yeah, uh, we can laugh about it because we've been through this stress, Tim. I mean, back in the boom in 2007, 2008, Tim and I owned over 25 houses. So we went through the photo and, and what happens is you start to buy houses that you should not be buying. Like I bought a few in the Northeast that I wish I just never had owned. Um, and we bought one together down in <laughs> Copperfield when Copperfield was a brand new community and there was nothing there. Yeah. And we just got caught up in the feeding yeah. frenzy and we bought this house. And it was and, hard to rent out back yeah. then, right? We tell people about new communities right now. The new communities, they're the ones in Calgary and you got to remember, Calgary is a boom or bust city, right? So the newer communities, if there's no infrastructure around there, like um, schools, like, shopping, yeah, even gas stations, you know. <laughs> it's going to be hard to rent out. And they're the first communities, and we've seen people overpay by one hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars in these new communities. And if the market shifts, which it can in Calgary, they're the first areas to get caught out in the outskirts there. So we got caught, we, we can talk about this because we got caught out in this, okay? But getting back to why 10 to 12% of properties are coming back on the market, they're writing these unconditional offers, which they should not be. They're ringing their mortgage broker after they've done that. And the mortgage broker is saying, no, how can you do that? You need conditions, you need a finance condition. And the biggest um, thing we're worried about is if these properties don't appraise, okay? And if they don't appraise, the bank will not lend you money on it. So if you put your deposit down and it's unconditional, your deposit's gone, okay? So we need to we need to 100% stress that and we just think it's just crazy. And then the other reason why these properties are coming back on the market or why the market's going so crazy, we have out-of-town buyers, mainly from Ontario. Yeah. The real buzz is in there. And the reason why the buzz is out there is because um, developers here in Calgary, they did the smartest thing ever. They advertised in Ontario. We know this because we work for home builders. Right? They advertised in Ontario. They drove the marketing up and people got all this um, excitement. And guess what happened? Every developer in Calgary is completely sold out in the outer communities. There is no more product. So they sold everything. And those Ontario buyers or BC buyers, they better pray that there's people uh, that are going to be there, buyers that are going to be there to buy that product off them after they the, 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 the homes are completed. And if they're not, those values will come right back down. Yeah. Okay, so it's very, very exciting to see what's going on. Um, we're only buying in communities that we know are going to continue to go up, even if the market goes down. When the market was going down, Tim, we were buying communities that were going up 13 to 20%. I know Highwood was one of those communities. We we're in a flat market for many years. We hit Highwood hard and our investors now are laughing. Yeah, now Highwood's <coughs> priced too high for us to get rental properties in there because the numbers just won't work. The, the average price went up too high in that community. So our investors that got in, like as I said, you know, they've made a lot of money. Before we go to the next slide, I just want to have a look at a couple of more numbers on this page. If you look down at the inventory, February, 2021, which is down here and February, 2022, we are down about a thousand listings. We were looking at 2020, February, 2020, 
there was about 5,500 listings in 2020 in February. Mm -hmm. So year over year, we're dropping by a thousand listings. Mm -hmm. That's also driving up these competing offers. Um, there's less and less inventory. Now we're, we're hoping that will change. We're we actually guaranteed that's going to change yeah. when the spring market starts. And that's traditionally when most people put their homes on the market. And what we're also going to see is people are going to see that their neighbor got 600,000 for his house. They're going to go, Hey, I want to get 600,000 for mine. So on that same street, you're going to see more and more and more houses come on. Yeah. So we're not worried about it at all. We're actually telling our investors to be smart about it. Um, you know, don't, don't go out there and make silly decisions. We actually cut our investors off. Like we've gone after how many properties Tim, and we're like, there is no way you're buying um, in, in an area that, is maybe doing a bit of a transition and overpaying for it. That is the worst thing you could do. Um, so we're actually here to make our clients money and tell them, no, you're not doing it. That's what type of real Yeah, because are. at the end of it all, the numbers have to work. You know, you might love that suite of property and it's the best suite of property on the street, but if you buy it at too high of a price and you blow your cash flow, you're, you're going to get really, yeah. really tired every month taking money out of your back pocket to subsidize that yeah. property. So that's why we got that. I know Connor's on the call Tim, we could talk about Connor. We cut him off. We yeah. said, hey, you, you know, it's just too much to pay for that property. Yeah. And so the reason why we do this for our clients is because one bad mistake in real estate, Tim, um, and we, we had a lot of mistakes over the yeah. years, and this is why we can get up every two weeks to do these seminars. When you make a bad mistake in real estate, what it does is it slows you right down. It actually stops you in your tracks yeah. and you can't refinance that money to go again. So that's why we never, ever, ever want our clients to make that mistake. We want to get them in the right property that the properties go up, you pull that equity out and you go again. And that's how we've lost so many properties. So